Thanks, Johannan. Um, so I'm, I'm going to talk about uh, pacemaker experiments. I mean, we heard a lot about this type of experiments um, during this workshop, and I'm going to uh, so to focus on the protocols and also to give some you some information about the pacemaker experiments we recommended for uh, CMIP6. So what, what, what are the motivations for the pacemaker experiments? So we heard a lot about, about this, but I, just, I have just one slide uh, about the motivation for this type of protocol. So the goal is to constrain the internal to decadal modes of viability of a couple model to follow the observed fluctuation. And, and so the motivation are to investigate the, uh, both the local response to the constrained temporal evolution of the SSD modes and also the remote ocean atmosphere response uh, in the over oceanic basins that are not constrained because we are in a, in a, in a couple system. So basically it's an attribution problem. And so I just reproduced here uh, the, two, uh, the two pictures that we've seen already from, uh, uh, from Yuko Saka and Xie uh, showing on the, oops. So how does it work, this pointer? Yeah. Uh, showing the, the trend in the observation of the, of the temperature over the, uh, this period here and the result from a, a pacemaker experiment where the, the SST is restored here over the eastern part of the Pacific. And so what, what you can see on this plot here that the, 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 they match pretty well, show, showing, uh, suggesting that the eastern part of the Pacific is responsible for a lot of the, of the patterns that we are showing in the, in the observation. Um, so, uh, in principle, this is a, a very easy protocol. Basically, how does it work? Uh, you just add a restoring term over the selected region or the selected domain where you want to, to restore the, the SST and you set a buffer zone uh, because we are in a copper mode uh, between the restored and the rest of the, the restored area and the rest of the, of the ocean. But uh, as always, uh, we need to be very cautious uh, uh, in this type of experiments because the restoring term may create energy imbalance uh, leading to the spin-up of the, of the couple model. Um, and also the restoring term may perturb the, the basic local ocean dynamics uh, uh, that may uh, perturb the entire system because as I said before, we have to remember that we are not in a forced mode. It's not very constrained. We are in a, in a couple mode. So basically what we need in this type of protocol, we need to find a, a set of parameters that perturb the least, the equilibrium and the physics uh, of the couple model, while we control enough the temporal evolution of the, of the SST and the low frequency change of the SST. And I would say, as usual, the devil is in the detail of this, of this type of protocol. So, so I'm going to, to, um, to go into a little bit in, 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 um, into detail about this restoring parameter because it's extremely important. So, so this, this equation is just the, the way uh, you do the, the pacemaker experiment. Basically, you take the, the non-solar heat flux of your model, which is here, and you had a restoring term, which is proportional to the difference between what is simulated by the model and the SSD you want to restore to. And you have this, this parameter here, which is a gamma parameter, which, can, which is also called the, the feedback coefficient. And the unit of this, uh, of this parameter is watt per meter square per, per Kelvin. So depend, depending on this parameter here, the, uh, the restoring is, uh, you control basically the strength of the, of the restoring with this uh, parameter. And so for, for the AMIP type of experiment, this parameter gamma is just infinite. Uh, you have an infinite re restoring to the, 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 the SST that you prescribe. You, uh, a strong restoring could be a, a thousand watt per meter square, which is equivalent to a restoring of a two day for a 50 meter depth of the ocean mi mix layer. And a weak restoring could be, for instance, a 40 watt per meter square, which is equivalent to a two month restoring for a similar type of, uh, for say, the same value of the uh, mix layer depth. So I'm going to show that, that this parameter is, complete, is very crucial for this pacemaker experiment. And I'm going to use one model, which is a CNRM-CM5 model. I'm not going to describe it. 
Uh, and I'm going to, I've done, I performed two, ty two type of experiments, an North Atlantic pacemaker experiment and the East Pacific pacemaker experiment, similarly to uh, what Yuko Saka and she have done. I'm not going to talk about this one because we, are, we heard a lot about uh, this, uh, this pacemaker experiment. I will focus on this uh, North Atlantic experiment. So using this model, and what I did I, uh, as a test, uh, I, I tested different values of the uh, of this restoring parameter, which are given here. So I have four sets of experiments with, uh, um, so a strong restoring corresponding to about two days and a weak restoring corresponding to about two months and some in between. And I have three members for the two extreme of this restoring parameter. And, and what I did, I did an experiment where I, I branched uh, the, the pacemaker experiment on the historical run of CNRM CM5. And for the sake of, um, uh, I mean, I didn't have a lot of computer power, basically, and not a lot of time either. So I just did some uh, sensitivity experiment over this period here, which is a 30-year period. It's basically, it's just to, to show how the protocol works and what we should do and should not do. So I'm going to describe uh, this uh, using this uh, very simple um, uh, analysis, which is based on the uh, EUF decomposition of the SST. So this is the observed EUF of the SST uh, over the, the, North, uh, the North Atlantic for winter time. So you recognize the traditional tribal here, which projects also on the AMV. Uh, and this all through pattern here. So this is the second mode of variability. And this, you have here the time series. So the observed time series is given by the color here. And so uh, blue and, and, and pink. Uh, showing that this mode over this period here has an abrupt shift uh, in 96, 95, 96. I mean, this is the traditional shift that we, we heard about uh, with the, uh, this, this workshop. Um, so the, the observation are, are, are given there, and then you have the kind of spaghetti here, which corresponds to the uh, uh, projection of the, of the model SST when the SST is restored to, to this pattern here. Uh, so the, the red curve, let's concentrate on the red and the blue. The red curve corresponds to the strong restoring, and basically it follows the observation. This is exactly what you want. And the blue curve corresponds to the weak restoring, where you could see that you have, you have three members here, so three curves. So you have a dispersion between, uh, uh, between these members. But basically, with this weak parameter, because it's two months, you still capture the internal, the decadal shift of the, um, of, of the SST. Uh, if you do a correlation uh, between uh, this time series and the observation, uh, the correlation is given here. So for each member, and the ensemble mean is this one, so it's 0.87, which is pretty good. And if it's, you have a strong restoring, this is 0.99, of, I mean by construction, uh, this is very good too. For the, the, the second one, you have a little bit more, more dispersion, but basically you can see that you can also capture the, the internal change. This is for winter, this is for summer. And for summer, you can really see that you capture a lot, uh, uh, even whatever the restoring, a strong or weak restoring, the, you capture the, the, the shift really where there is no dispersion. And this is because in, in summer, the mixed layer depth is it's very shallow. So basically, the, the restoring that you apply is in fact a much stronger, uh, because the mixed layer depth is about uh, 10, 10 meter, 10, 20 meter uh, in, in summer, which corresponds to, rest, to a restoring time scale, even for the, for the weak one, uh, to about uh, 15 days. So basically, we capture a lot. So there's a seasonality, actually, in this, in, in this restoring business um, that is kind of, kind of important, too. OK, so now that we see that uh, the, the restoring, whatever the the value works pretty well. I mean, the target is that we, I mean, works pretty well in the sense that it follows the internal variation that we want to, um, to reproduce. The, the, the target with this type of experiment is, is not to, I mean, is, is to compare to a control experiment. And usual, usually the control experiment is a historical experiment that, that are produced uh, with the same model. And, and the target is, you, you shouldn't introduce any change in the mean state uh, or in the pacemaker experiments compared to the historical experiments because otherwise you're not going to, to compare, to, to, to fairly compare the, the, the simulation. So here I'm showing you the, the biotropic extreme function, so basically the, ocean, the, the horizontal circulation in, in the ocean, and I'm showing you the difference between the historical experiments and the pacemaker experiments with this acronym here. So 40 is uh, 
Q40 is what you want from the square per kelvin. This is weak restoring, and this is strong restoring here. And what you want is basically you want to have everything in, in white uh, with no change in the, in the mixed state. This is the difference between the historical and the space maker experiments. And you could see that uh, for this weak restoring, everything is white. For this strong restoring here, but the difference in the mean state is it's, it's quite significant. We have a strengthening of the, the subpolar gyre here and a strengthening of, of the subtropical gyre here. And it's, it's the, the magnitude is about 10 uh, up, which is not significant, which is significant. <laughs> it's 25% of the, of the mean, basically. Um, if you look at the, another parameter, which is a mixed layer depth, uh, you see a little bit of change for the uh, weak restoring for the world per meter square per Kelvin, but it's not that strong. But for the, the strong restoring, the mixed layer depth is getting, very, is getting much deeper here in the eastern part of the I mean, central part of the Pacific. And also you have along, the, along Greenland here, you have a very strong deepening. And, and here shallowing in the center of the, of, of the, of the, of the, of the subpolar gyre. Uh, so basically, what, we, what you see here, it's a strong restoring, even if the, so the SST is, is very much like, like the observation. But with a very strong restoring, you have an acceleration of this circulation here, and a plunging of the mixed layer in the Labrador Sea. And here you even have some spurious effect, like a very strange uh, signal in the model, meaning that the perturbation is really strong and really affect here the, the circulation. If you look at another parameter, which is the AMOC, uh, the, so the AMOC is extremely important because it, it reduces a bit the heat of the system, and we are in a, in a, in a couple model here. Uh, so basically, what you want, you want to have the, the, the AMOC. The shading here represents the variability in, the, in this model of the of the AMOC over the from the historical simula simulation. So we have ten members for for this one, and you want to have the pacemaker experiment within this uh, um, this uh, this envelope here. So what you see is for very strong restoring, the AMOC has a, has a drift, which is quite important. Uh, at the very end, some members can have a, a six, I mean, about more than 10, 10 sphere up more than uh, the, the historical experiment. And so what you see here is, in fact, the strong restoring um, leads to a, a, a model spin-up. Uh, and while the, the weak restoring, it's perfectly with the, the range of the uh, the estimation given by, by the ensemble uh, uh, historical simulation. So you could, you could tell me, okay, who cares? Because uh, what, what, the on, what the atmosphere sees is just the SST. So who cares about the AMOC below the, the SST? Actually, the model cares a lot. Um, because as I told you, the, the, the marinal circulation is uh, um, reduced to be the heat over the, over the system. And I'm showing here the, the heat content uh, in the North Atlantic, so it's average from 0 to 60 North, and here the heat content in the South Atlantic. So same type of plot, uh, the, the historical, the envelope of the historical are here, and what you see that the heat content in the, uh, in the North Atlantic is drifting uh, in this model. But it's also drifting in the South Atlantic where you don't want to have any influence of the, uh, of the SST. So there's an, an adjustment here of the tropical Atlantic heat, oh, this is the tropics, I forgot to tell you, a tropical Atlantic heat content, and, and it perturbs the, the southern Atlantic basin, and so this is only a 30-year integration. Uh, but I, I could start seeing some change also in the ACC. It's not significant uh, because it's 30 years integration, and, and we should uh, carry on the, the, the integration. But because of this change in the redistribution of the heat, the ACC is starting to be affected in, the, in this type of model. So the question is, can we confidently interpret the remote uh, influence of AMO in the South Atlantic when the response is very much perturbed by the protocol that, that, that we are using and basically on the choice of this parameter of restoring? Another um, side effect of caveats of this very, very strong restoring is the, the, the relationship is, is um, it perturbs a lot the relationship between the, the, the atmosphere and the, and the ocean at, at high frequency. So basically what I'm showing here is the, the lead lag relationship on the, 
uh, so the correlation, the lag correlation, the correlation here between the, the temperature and the precipitation over this area here, the TNA, uh, the so tropical North Atlantic area. And they have the lags, uh, this is a lag correlation, so in, the, in this part of the, of the plot, the ocean leads the atmosphere, and in this one, the atmosphere leads the, the ocean. And you also have this, this again, these this four curves corresponding to the to different restoring. So your target is to, to, to match the historical simulation. And, and what you see is, I mean, in this, in this area for the precipitation, uh, uh, so when you have warm SST, it's preceded by, weak, by, by less precipitation. Basic, basically, you have clear, clear sky and the SST warms. So the, the ocean is responding to the atmosphere. And you have the feedback here, which uh, you have more SST after the SST is formed, more precipitation after the SST is formed. And what, what you see is with strong restoring, this is the red curve, basically you, you, you completely destroy here the, uh, the relationship, which is much better captured with the, with the weak restoring. This is the same thing for the net, for surface net, net solar flux and the same also for the, for the latent heat flux. So with a strong restoring, you don't uh, allow the, the ocean to, to adjust to the high frequency of the, uh, of the atmosphere, which is the, the main source, I mean the, the main uh, feature at very, at very high frequency. Uh, this was in a, in a uh, in the tropical Atlantic, this is in the in the subpolar gyre. Uh, sa same result in the subpolar gyre. Uh, um, there is a relation, strong relation. I mean, a relationship between precipitation and SST, meaning that when the SST is warm, you have less precipitation uh, before. And uh, this is shown here. And in in red, you can see that you have the the opposite type of result. And this is also true for the sea level pressure. The sea level pressure is, is the relationship is not is not good. Uh, I'm going to skip this one. Okay, so this first conclusion. So the the strong restoring it it can be can lead to spurious uh, behavior, and so the, the, it can um, provide. I mean, it can trigger some some drift because the energy budget is basically not not close in this type of simulation. And uh, so you destroy also the intrinsic uh, ocean atmosphere relationship. And so the recommendation is uh, do not put too far too far the the, the, the bottom for the restoring term. And and also it's very it's it's crucial to diagnose precisely the impact of the protocol. Uh, I have two more slides for because you you can t tell me that it's uh, it's model dependent. Yes, it is model dependent. And I'm going to show you a diff another flavor of spurious effect that you can have in the GFDL model. So this is thanks to uh, Johan and, um, Johan and, and, and Rim uh, uh, work. So you've seen already this, uh, um, this picture from, from Rim uh, describing the, the, um, the protocol that they used. So basically, uh, they did some uh, experiments where they restore the, the system, in that case, to a fixed SST pattern, the AMB plus pattern, the AMB minus pattern, and they do also a control simulation. So we show you the difference yesterday between the AMB plus and AMB minus. I'm going to, to focus here on the control experiment. Um, so they did some, some tests on this uh, uh, restoring coefficient as well uh, with, with this model. And we, I'm going to focus on this area here, the, the, the subologi which is very important. Um, so I'm showing you here uh, um, three curves with three different, oops, with three different restoring terms. So the black one is uh, kind of strong restoring, it's 20 days, and is there is a drift uh, even in this uh, third polar gyre, and the drift is, the, is kind of significant. And if you look at the, 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 the AMOC, you have here the overturning circulation, um, in the ocean, uh, showing the AMOC, the mean AMOC in, in contour, and the, the difference between the historical simulation and, uh, and the AMOC in this, in this pacemaker experiments, you can really see that you have a weakening of the AMOC uh, in, in the modern as a function of lead time. This is 20 years here, this is five year uh, average uh, period. So, and this corresponds to the less heat transported to the, to the subpolar gyre. Uh, they did something very interesting. Uh, they applied the same, uh, the same uh, uh, forcing, 
but in, in they introduce a new correction, which is of a salinity correction, correction uh, in the sense that uh, they, they added an additional term so, so that the density is neutral, so it's compensating the, the, um, the change of the density due to the temperature. So in that case, you don't have any uh, density change in the subologi. Uh, and you can see that the drift is lower, and it's the same, same type of uh, uh, um, pattern uh, of the um, AMOC in this, in this part here. And the, the last one, the red, the red curve, is the same with the weak restoring. So the surface restoring, the sea surface restoring, the sea surface flux for neutral density, and uh, 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 weak restoring. And the drift is very minimum, and the drift in the in, in the AMOC is also very minimum. So it's not only one model which is very sensitive to to the to, to this watt per meter square per, per per Kelvin. And what I said is extremely important because in a, in a, we are in a couple model is to to evaluate the flux restoric term, uh, and what what you want you don't want to add any energy into your system with this protocol experiment. And I'm showing you the, the three, three curves again for this uh, flux restoring term. So you, you know, remember the equation I showed you before, this term that, 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 is, that, that allow you to, to restore the density you want. Basically what you want again is zero. So you see in this uh, uh, strong restoring without uh, 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 density neutral co correction, there is a very strong drift. And you see the value here, the value is, is, is at the, at the very end is 15 watt per meter square, which is huge. This is a huge amount of energy that you put into your system. We're not talking about one or two watt per, per meter square like for, for the signal that you, we want to investigate. We are talking about 10 watt of meter, meter square here. And so the target is to have zero, and you can see that this weak, with this weak restoring and this uh, salinity um, additional restoring, uh, you have a perfect balance, which is what, what you want. And there's something very imp important, is the pacemaker experiment is not a flux-corrected experiment. You should, add, you should not add this the energy. Okay, so as a conclusion, uh, as I told you, the, the, the strong uh, restoring can lead to spurious behavior, so we, we should be uh, very careful about, about it. And the second conclusion is very important. The recipe to avoid the, the drift is model-dependent. And, and the use of salinity term for density neutral might be required. It's true for the GFDM model. It's not true for our model, uh, CNM, CM5 model. So there is no magic recipe to, to avoid the drift, and each group has to work on, on its own, own model. So it's an interesting uh, possibility, um, alternative, not alternative, but I think a hypothesis that need to be, to be tested. It's what I showed you is uh, the, the gamma parameter is always fixed. And there are some, some prelim, preliminary work done at IPSL where the, the, the gamma here would be a function actually of the mixed layer depth. In that case, you, don't, you, con you really control the time scale of the restoring um, that, that, that you want. Because if, uh, uh, with, a, with a, gamma, a fixed gamma, if the mixed layer depth is, is, is really high, then you don't control much. And you really want to keep the, the, the SSD anomaly that you want to investigate the impact. So for CMIP6, uh, because of all of these uh, this caveats, we, we have decided uh, in this DCPP component C to, um, to, to, place, to, to put the idealized AMV experiment in tier one uh, and to, uh, to put the, the pacemaker experiment for the Atlantic and for the Pacific in tier three, because it's extremely important that the drift must be avoided and, 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 and to, to work on this drift uh, it's, it's much easier to work on this uh, idealized experiment. So we've, we thought that it was, in fact, a secondary step after this uh, uh, um, idealized experiment. And the recommendation for the, to the group would be to provide some basic diagnostics to document the drift. So, for instance, the time series of the flux restoring term, which should be close to zero, the AMOC, the seasonal cycle of ENSO, because I didn't have time to, to show you, but the pacemaker experiment in Atlantic can change the seasonal cycle of the... Of, of ENSO in your model, and then you, you will start to drift in the Pacific. And this is what, so, something that you got in the uh, thread in your experiment, I think, because you had to do a control experiment in the Pacific. So I 
I'm not sure I have to go to, into the detail of, of this. So you can find in the, doc in the document of the component C in DCPP, you can find all the, all the, 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 the protocols. So basically, as I told you, the idealized experiments are in, in, in tier one with a weak uh, restoring, and we suggest to do so to, to follow the, the uh, protocol uh, tested by NCAR and by uh, GFDL. Uh, so ten, 10 years and 25 members. I mean, the more member you, you, you can put is, is better. With the, this idealized experiments for AMV plus and AMV minus, and we also added the, so the idealized experiments for the, the, the IPO. Uh, so same type of, of experiment, but for the, for the Pacific. And, and, and so the pacemaker experiment are, are done in the, are, are now put in, in a tier three uh, priority. Uh, something we also wanted to, to test, I mean, we heard uh, about the uh, volcano uh, in, uh, that are very important in, in decadal uh, variability. So in this uh, DCPP component C, we also wanted to, to evaluate the, the impact of the volcano in the, in the prediction. So the, the, the idea in, in tier one is just to, to repeat the, the 91 prediction without the pinatubo to see the impact of the pinatubo in the, in the prediction. And, and also uh, the idea for the uh, component B. So component B is the, the real-time forecast. The real-time forecast should be done with, uh, with and without Pinatubo, because what we want, we want to have the, the, the range of possibility of the forecast, and an eruption can happen any time. So this is in tier one. And, and the last experiments that, that are in tier three, we want to investigate a little bit more the, uh, the impact of the initialization, especially in the subpolar gyre. Uh, we, we've heard during this workshop that the subpolar is extremely important for predictability and the source of variability. So we, we want to repeat the, the, the shift to, uh, of the, of the subpolar gyre, so, so to repeat, I mean, to, to repeat the, the, the prediction where we don't initialize the, the subpolar gyre and repeat this date here uh, to see if the, uh, if the shift of the, of the AMV is forecast or not, if the subpolar gyre is not initialized. Okay, so just to finish, I, I really liked what Dirk Nock said. We should not be ashamed of curiosity in, uh, in, uh, in our field. And I just, we just had it. We should not be ashamed of, of slowness as well. Because sometimes I have the impression that we, we tend to go a bit too fast in this, uh, in this business. Okay, thank you.